Peace, what's going down? It's DJ Payne One. People know that I love to sample, and uh, they also often ask me how I sample, what DAW I use. Um, and to those who don't know, I use uh, Acid Pro uh, version 8 is new. So I'm using that now, and I wanted to show you a couple ways that I manipulate samples within that uh, DAW. So here's a feature of Acid that I used to use a lot. Um, and it was especially helpful when I was sampling off vinyl because when you sample a record, you don't know what the tempo is. Here's a sample library created by my man Dream Life, but let's let's pretend that um, the the tempos aren't marked. So let's find a sample. So what I could do uh, right here in Acid is depending on your settings the beat mapper wizard might appear automatically um, but I can just switch between these these three types of audio and then engage the beat mapper wizard which essentially just creates a downbeat and then imposes a time signature grid over the sample so that you can determine what its tempo is and then you can time stretch it however you like so this is how it would work find the downbeat which is you know the, the first count and then I know you know that this is the this is the full measures worth So now I have a beat map track here, and as you can see, the tempo of the sample is actually 78, but my project tempo is 84. But because it's beat map, now it's going to stay in time. So I can, you know, really stretch the time. and it will stay on beat. But I'm gonna show you the method that I use the most often, which is kind of brute force. I have a drum loop here from a Darrell Banks kit. Um, and it's 84 beats per minute. So let me switch the project tempo back to 84. And I'm going to find another sample here. Let's see, this is an experiment. This might not turn out great. Um, as you can see, this particular sample is at 87 beats per minute. My project tempo is at 84, but it really doesn't matter. So generally when I sample, and, and you know, normally I'm sampling off of an old song, off of a vinyl, I can visually see, and this is why I like to use Acid, I can, I can see all the sound waves, and very easily I can just chop this the whole sample up as much as I want and then rearrange it manually which gives me all the control in the world. The shortcut to adding chop points, um, what's called splits in acid, is just the S key. So I hit the S key wherever I see a part of the sample that I want chopped. So these distinctive sound waves here are good chop points because I know those are individual instrument hits or the beginnings of new chords, etc. I have no idea what I'm going to make, by the way. But I'm just chopping away because because it's easy, and I just kind of zone zone out when I do this. Anyway, so now I have all these individual pieces. <laughs> So let's say, I don't even want these, let's say I just want to keep it simple, 
and use these as half notes. And I'm just going to rearrange them. No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. And if I want to change um, the the pitch of any of these individual pieces, I, I would change them all at once so they're all staying in the same key. But all I have to do is is click the plus or minus key. Very fast. Um, that's very helpful when it comes to drum programming, which I'll cover in a future video. But with this, because I'm not using the beat mapper, so my sample isn't locked to a tempo, I'm going to have to do that manually, but, but that's what I like. Um, I like having the most control. Not to say that if you uh, beat map a sample that you can't still chop it and, and rearrange it, you can. Um, and, and if this type of freeform sample arrangement isn't your thing, then that's a, using the beat mapper wizard is a great way um, to always keep your sample in time, no matter how you manipulate it. So I personally just like you know messing with stuff freeform. I've been doing this for a while. And I'm just gonna drop the the pitch. <laughs> Maybe I will use these individual pieces, but I gotta down pitch it. How does it even sound? And now, because I lowered the pitch, now the frequencies are, are sounding pretty low. So I'm gonna EQ that out. And every track by default comes with just this kind of basic EQ, which I use all the time. It's not too overwhelming. Um, and I like to, you know, um, low shelf samples, especially this particular sample has a little bit of bass in it. So I, I'm going to want to create my own baseline over eventually, but I'm not going to get too crazy. I just want to show you this, this, um, sample process that I use. <laughs> It's easy. I mean, once you get the hang of it, the workflow is amazing. That's why I've stuck with this DAW. Uh, I, I can just work really quickly with samples because I have that ability to just visually discern between, you know, parts of the sample that I want to chop and isolate, and then I can rearrange them as much as I want. Quickly, I can just do that with any sample without even um, worrying about the tempo, honestly. Just hitting the S key. sound bad and look how quickly I did that so that's that stay tuned for the next video I'm going to talk about drum programming and the kind of workflow that I use in acid pro 8
to program my drums. Appreciate you watching. Peace.